came here for a wrestling match, you're in the wrong place. That's across the hallway. We're going to talk to you about everything that there is to know about the high school tonight. My name is Tony Moormile. I am the supervisor of guidance for the school district, K through 12. I want to introduce uh, supervisors who are going to speak to you tonight. First, the supervisor of science, math, and practical arts is Yvette Pasanowicz. Panasowicz, I'm sorry. Next, Supervisor of Humanities, English, World, Hi World Languages, Fine and Performing Arts, and ESL is Barbara Beers. We also have Supervisor of Special Education for grades 6 to 12 is Lynn Booth. And also, Supervisor of Health, PE, and Athletics is Mr. Ken Mason. And we have the administration from the high school with us tonight. We have the principal, John Dauber, assistant principal, Cliff Williams, and Allison Fisher. Okay, we want to start out tonight by talking to you about the Freshman Academy. Over at the middle school now, and let me, let me stop and say that this presentation will be on the website, um, and it's also being videotaped, and that'll be on the guidance page. The transition from middle school to high school, middle school they go to, they're in houses, and here at the high school they go into two teams. They're in pride and spirit. The purpose of the teams is to have it personalized for the teachers and, uh, and the students, for the teachers to get to know the students, also to allow the teachers to collaborate with other teachers who, te who teach the same students. So we group the, the, the classes together, English, history, and science for that purpose. Also with the Freshman Academy, there's an emphasis on community service, service learning. There's a volunteer fair for, for the freshmen. There's also a career fair, which um, is for the sophomores, and then there's a coat drive. So there's a big emphasis on community service with, within the Freshman Academy. Okay, soon in February, we're gonna have students, I'm sorry, we're gonna have the middle school students, the eighth graders come here for, for an orientation where they'll learn a little bit about the high school and they'll, they'll hear from high school students about high school life. Another transition is the orientation this summer which happens right before school. It's an opportunity for the freshmen to learn the school build, building a little bit more so they're comfortable when they start in September. And then when they're here as students, we have opportunities for academic help for them after school. We have NHS, National Honor Society, tutoring. We have the homework club and we have destinations. Um, those three items are all ways for your child to get academic help after school at different spots with, within the high school. More on that will be explained to them during the orientation. Okay, so your child hasn't even started yet and we're talking to you about graduation. Still a while off, but these are the things we met with your child already this week 
to talk to them um, about all these things. We told them that we were going to talk to you tonight. And this is one of the big things that we talked about. Every year that they're here, they need English. They also need phys ed and health every year that they're here. Okay, they need three years of history, one year of world history, two years of American history. They need three years of science and math. They only need one year of world language, but more is recommended. A newer graduation requirement, if you have older children that have gone through, this may not have applied to them. These freshmen-to-be need a half year of economics. They need a year of visual performing arts. And then the last line, they need a year of what used to be called practical arts. Now it's called 20, 21st century life, careers, or technical. They need one credit of that. And our credit system works like this. Uh, for a year in a class, it counts as one credit. More on the class offerings for each of these subjects in a minute. We've increased over the last few years the number of total grad, uh, credits that a Lawrence student needs for graduation. It's increased from 25 till when your child is a senior, it'll be 27 credits. And that breaks down into 20.5 required which you see, which I just mentioned, and then 6.5 elective credits for a total of 27. Any questions on graduation? By the way, uh, besides the video and the PowerPoint, your child is getting the course of study tomorrow at the middle school. All this will be detailed in the course of study as well. So we want to set up your child for readiness for college. Okay, that doesn't mean that um, anything more than that. Okay, we want to prepare every child for college. We hope that the child, the student chooses college. Um, sometimes that, do, that, that doesn't happen, they go in a different direction, but our goal is to prepare everyone for it. Now the minimum graduation requirements are not enough uh, for entrance into the kind of four-year colleges that we want to see our students go to, that our students are capable of attending. For example, math is a three-year graduation requirement. For college, colleges ask for four years of math. Science, three years. If, you're, if your child is going to major in something in science, they better take four years of it. Even if they're not, it's still a great idea to take four years of a science. World language, we only ask for one year. They should take at least two years of the same foreign language. Three or more is even better. And then on the bottom, we want your child to take at least seven credits a year. Eight credits is the max. That's a full schedule, no study hall. Seven credits would mean one study hall. They should take at least seven. Okay, for those of you that have a junior or a senior here at the high school now, they've had to take or will take the HESPA test. That is being phased out. Now there will be what's called the PARC assessment, pupil assessment for readiness for college and careers. I think the acronym stands for. So this will be what 
your child will take spring of their junior year. You see how it's, bro it's broken down? There's six tests, three in language arts, three in math. The scores will be reported on student, trans student transcripts and other reports, which is different than the HESPA now. However, there will not be a score needed for graduation. I'm going to turn it over to our supervisor, Ms. Panasovich. Hi, thanks for coming out this evening. We're going to start off probably with the most complex offerings that we have for your students coming over into mathematics. Where your student begins in mathematics at Lawrence High School depends on where they are right now as an eighth grader. So I want you to take a look at the chart here and find the math class that your child is enrolled in right now. Then you can follow it down to the potential sequence that they can enroll in here in Lawrence High School. Remember, according to the state of New Jersey, they must take three years of math. So for any child, a fourth year of math is optional. And most students can get to very high levels of math, regardless of where they are right now in, high, in the middle school. So if your child's entered right now in the middle school in a course called Algebra 1A, they will come over here to the high school and take Algebra 1B, which is the second half of that full year algebra course. It's an Algebra 1 curriculum. They do half of the curriculum in their eighth grade year and the other half in their ninth grade year, or they could take a full year of algebra followed by geometry, and then algebra two. They need, at minimum, those three math classes. As Mr. Mormile just pointed out to you, there's an assessment. We call them end-of-course assessments in mathematics, and they will take an end-of-course assessment in algebra, if they are enrolled in algebra, an end-of-course in geometry, the year they are done with their geometry, and Algebra 2. So the state does mandate which math courses all students must be exposed to, and there are two algebra-based courses and geometry. As you can see, we have other electives. All of our academic courses here at Lawrence High run in two levels. We have college prep and honors, and that holds true here for our mathematics as well. So as you can see, this is a lot of choice or different places that students will start in math, and it is very different than all of our other math course, uh, other academic courses that we have here in Lawrence. We also have some additional math courses that weren't on the other page. We offer a semester, so that's half a year, of SAT or ACT math prep, and students usually take that in an elective realm. They've taken that after they've completed their three years of math, typically. And then we also have academic support instruction, and this is a second touch math class for students who may be experiencing some difficulties in math. We focus on a lot of basic skills work to give them the support they need in the standard math class to, to just support their achievement there. So I also supervise science, and as you can see, the science slide is much easier to read than the math slide. So the hard part of the evening is over. We've done math, because that's the most complicated thing we're gonna have tonight. But we, all, we recommend that all of our freshmen take biology, and again, we offer college prep or honors. Our sophomore students all enroll in chemistry 
or chemistry honors, and then they need that third year of science as required by the state of New Jersey, your students now begin to have a little more option into their choices with science. As you can see, they could take physics or physics honors. They could take environmental science. They could take AP environmental science. At this point, many of them qualify to take AP biology or AP chemistry. So there's a little more choice in the schedule. We also have a full year of anatomy and physiology that will meet the graduation requirement. And many students choose the more traditional route of biology, chemistry, physics, and then in their fourth year into AP sciences as well. They're all good avenues to take and it really depends on your child's interests and their strengths. We have a half year genetics course and a half year forensic science course. They pair very nicely for a fourth year science offering as well. I'm gonna pass this show over now. I believe my slides are done, but I'll be back later. I still have more areas to talk to you about. Okay, good evening. Um, for English, which I feel, sorry, is the most, actually the second most important subject that your child will take, which begs the question, what is the most important? <laughs> Driver Ed. Come on, let's get serious. So, okay, but back to the important stuff. In ninth grade, they have the choice of English one, English one honors, and then we go through the similar sequences that uh, Ms. Panasowicz uh, alluded to in science. Let me just give you a minute, you can take a look at those. Okay. Thank you. Um, our electives for freshmen, so for your children, public speaking is an option, and if you don't think public speaking is a nerve-wracking thing, come on up here. It is. It is probably one of the most uh, stressful situations, but um, our teachers really help the students feel comfortable with it and often um, help them to put their work into um, situations, public situations, uh, competitions, and they've been very successful with those also. Publications and journalism, that's a, uh, an upper class elective, but that uh, funnels the students into publishing the yearbook. Communications in the real world, um, again, an upper level. SAT and ACT skills is a semester course, and that um, helps students with test taking strategies. Just as Ms. Panasowicz talked about academic support instruction, we have the same thing in English. Uh, for students who have not demonstrated proficiency on the New Jersey Ask, or who just need that extra little uh, support in English, that would be a, a course for them. And then a senior course, it's listed as an elective, but it's not. It's the um, alternative high school uh, exam uh, pre uh, preparation for that. That's the OSS awesome course. Some of our semester courses, we, we really do try to touch the students where they are, uh, where their interests lie. If your child is a writer, we've got courses for him or her. If your child is a performer, we've got drama courses. A reader, we've got literature courses. We've got all kinds of really, really interesting things that, uh, and these come from the students. The students have talked about what they would like to study, and we've been able to incorporate those into our curriculum. With social studies, as um, Mr. Moore-Mile said, you do re we are required for three years, one year of modern world civ, and two years of U.S. history. 
I would say at least 75% of our students, maybe even more than that, in their senior year take a, a history elective because, again, there are all kinds of interesting electives there. World languages. We have the three world languages that are uh, currently being taught at the middle school, Spanish, Chinese, and French. And we also provide options to take, in the um, high school level, Latin and Italian. Your, um, there we go. Your children will be recommended for a level. Many of them will go right from the middle school into level two of a language, thereby allowing them to progress through the sequence up through uh, an honors course or an AP course. ESL, English as a second language, for many of our students who are not native speakers, and that's determined by a diagnostic test. And we support um, our newly arrived students and, and those who just have not grown up speaking English. We support them not only in an English class, we do have a sheltered history class where um, the class is taught by a history teacher who is also an ESL teacher and our ESL teachers also provide in-class support in other courses as needed, whether it be math or science. Hello, I'm Lynn Booth, I'm Supervisor for Special Services uh, for students in, uh, it's actually changed to grades 7 to 12, so all the students that are in the middle school right now uh, that are under special education, I work with them, their case managers, their teachers, and get them ready to transfer up here. Um, the same services that we have, but they're going to look a little different, is we have in-class support services in the four primary content areas. We also have what's referred to as the out-of-class replacement services, replacement courses, which are going to be smaller class settings, um, so they can get really intense instruction and support services. We also add to our course of study, which the case managers will talk to the students and parents about, a couple other courses that really seem to help some of our students that need additional help. We have study skills, which is basically designed to increase the organizational skills or time management. It's also designed to actually produce more support in the other content areas that they're being taught during the school year. That's something that will be talked to uh, when the program is developed for the students for next year as a possibility. We also have, as far as the economics requirement, uh, many students either take principles of investing or some of the special education students will take uh, what's called personal finance. And we have a personal finance one and two, um, which meets the economics requirement. Um, it's just the course also takes into consideration what other needs the students may have. One thing for those parents that do have students in special education is to know that the case managers at the middle school and at the high school are working very, very hard in communication and collaboration to make sure that the students' transition up here is very, very smooth. Uh, we do have our high school case managers. They're actually being appointed within the next two weeks so they will know to start communication with the case managers down there um, so that they will be able to become familiar with them, understand what they need and they also will become familiar to the students. Uh, the students will get an opportunity to come up here and work with them as well a little bit. So they'll be very ready to run for next year. I'm speaking for Ken Mason, who's our supervisor of PE and athletics. For every year that your child is in a public high school in New Jersey, they have to take uh, PE and health as Ms. Beers mentioned, the big year in health is sophomore year with driver education. It's, a, it's, a, it's not an easy class, uh, but the students are highly motivated to do well for that one. The sport on the, in the bottom picture, one of the most popular sports in PE, I know it's a small a picture. Can anyone name that sport? It's called pickleball. 
I, I go in, I like watching it because it's usually a uh, pretty, pretty intense game. The kids get into it. They could play hard without um, getting sweaty and, and uh, using uh, a lot of physical energy. They enjoy it. Okay, besides a great academic program and so much more, uh, Lawrence has a very robust athletic program. Uh, you probably know that we just played in the state finals before 7,500 fans at the College of New Jersey a couple months ago. We have a lot of different sports offerings for your child to get involved with here, and we encourage them to get involved with, with a sport or two or three, as many, as many as they can handle and still keep up good grades. Mr. D'Angelo, uh, one of the high school counselors, he asks the eighth graders uh, this week, he asks them, who is eligible to them? Who is eligible for sports going over to the high school next year in the fall? And uh, I think one kid was able to answer it correctly. The answer is everybody. They're all eligible fall of their, of their freshman year. However, mid-year, after um, the midterm exams, uh, semester grades are recorded, uh, then they uh, may be eligible or ineligible based on their grades. They have to keep up at least six and three-quarter credits to be eligible for the spring, and then, uh, and then so on for each, for each semester. That's probably a good reason for uh, your child to take at least seven credits. The more credits, the more opportunity. The more credits taken, the more credits uh, to, to actually a attain. Okay, with a strong athletic program, uh, we're in touch with the requirements for the NCAA. There's a difference in Lawrence High School GPA and the NCAA. GPA, I work with the athletes on what they need in order to be eligible for a scholarship to Division I or Division II school. Uh, core courses are only in academic areas, whereas the LHS GPA, that's a GPA in all areas. If you want to learn more about it, um, you could go to NCAA, look at the clearinghouse, look at the worksheet, look at the sliding scale. It's the GPA, the core GPA, along with the SAT or ACT score needed for eligibility in college. Okay, I'm gonna turn it over again. See, I told you I'd be back, kept my promise. So another area that I, under, I, I supervise are the practical arts. And the practical arts includes the family and consumer science, I guess I'll date myself. When I was in school, that was home ec. We still have that, it's still here. And the business department and the technology department. That encompasses the practical arts, which they need a credit towards graduation. In the area of family and consumer science, these are the courses that we have to offer. Some of them are semester-based, which means they're a half year and they're a half credit, and sometimes you can match them up. For example, some students might take culinary part one for half a year and then match that up in the business department with the principles of investing. They get a half credit for that. There's a full year and they were able to go to a couple of different areas. These might be the areas where your child finds their passion, what they might do post-graduation. I can say I've had two children that have gone through the Lawrence Township Schools, and one of them found their passion in the area of the visual arts, and the other one in the business area. So there are a lot of elective classes where students can look to find other options for them for their future as well.
We're just going to go back and forth for a couple slides. All right. In the fine and performing arts, again, as Ms. Panasowicz said, we have uh, students who are not only passionate but so talented, and they can find courses that would uh, help them to develop their skills, whether they be in music, you know, uh, singing, the choral music, uh, instrumental, whatever instrument they play, or the visual arts whether it's painting, drawing, pottery, um, and then also in performing. Uh, we have a four, full four-year theater program, and each year there is a spring, um, yeah, spring musical and a fall drama, and then at the end of the year there's a student production also, so students can really find different ways to express themselves, and if they would prefer, we have needs for students to work behind the scenes, whether they be our technicians up there in the booth tonight, and or those who work back in, in back of the stage and helping to build things. And Ms. Panasowicz. All right, I'm back again. So I mentioned the business department, but is now renamed, thank you, native New Jersey, but a more appropriate name is the 21st Century Life and Career Skills. And these are some of the courses that your students can take. Again, we're looking to fill that particular elective within their schedule and to meet the New Jersey graduation requirements. There, there are your classes that are uh, possible there. Um, the sports marketing and um, other courses that we have also have a component of DECA, which is a business type competition that many of the students uh, choose to participate in through their uh, courses here. And we just went to the um, regional DECA competition and our students did very well. They're moving on to the state level. So these are just uh, a variety of different classes that we have. These are elective classes under the practical arts or the new 21st century life and career skills. Uh, robotics and programming is a fairly new course that we have to offer. Um, students enjoy it. It's not just programming. At least now you get to see what the fruits of your labor of programming produce because you need to get that robot to do something. Um, and it's it's pretty well subscribed to for a new course. So this is just some de general information um, about our elective courses. And you do need to read the course of uh, offering booklet to really see is this a full year course or is this a semester course or a half year course. And if it's a half year course to make sure you fill the schedule for both semesters within the school year and of course our guidance counselors do a fine job making sure that every child has a full schedule and all the credits that they need each year that they're here so they can go walk down that graduation aisle and pick up that diploma and you're all proud of them with their caps and gowns on. Okay, the second check mark, uh, we're pushing students of all grades to take to choose alternatives for elective classes. It's a, it's a good idea if a student is not able to get a class because it doesn't fit with all the other courses that they've taken, um, then the counselor has an alternate right there um, to, to slide in. So we're encouraging all, all grades take choose alternatives. Hopefully we can get them their first choice, and in most cases we can. So January 27th, um, you're going to see um, the class registration on the left. Uh, that link is going to be is going to be there. So we're going to go live on the 27th, just for the class of tw of 2018. Now it's not like Black Friday where you have to get there, you have to get your items right away or else they'll go away. They'll be they'll the requests will be there for you to choose for a short time, for a few weeks. All right, so you're in no rush to do it on the 27th, but just keep that in the back of your mind 
I think we are reminding you of that um, question. Is it under the parents sign-in? Yes, I'm sorry. It's, it's under the parent portal. So you go to the, the parent access and you'll see class registration. And then this screen will pop up. And you see, I, I'm sorry, it's such small print, but you'll see the different class sections. So you just uh, click the edit button on the right to request the course. The, the list of courses come up and you just, you just choose the correct one. And then you see the elective options on the bottom. Now, your, your child will be recommended for all the academic courses that, that they will take. Okay, so there'll be academic courses for, for your child to take that they're recommended for. Um, and the electives, that's what you want to choose uh, alternatives for. So the recommendations for the honors chemistry will already be recommended by that time. Do you want to jump in there? Yeah, I'll jump in. Hello everybody, Ms. Lasky. Uh, you will be getting directions for the parent access. I'll send that through a uh, alert now. You'll get an email with all the directions. I will post it also on the website and on Facebook and every other place that I usually post. The question about recommendations will not happen until I believe the third marking period. Science will just be ending this at this point for the biology, but everything else will not come until the third marking period. So you will not see that on the report card until that point. So that will be changed as we yes, the guidance counselor will take care of that yes. for you. Yeah, and and uh, guidance counselors will be meeting with your child um, February, March. And uh, if a recommendation changes, it'll go to the high school counselor, and the high school counselor will make that change in, in your child's list of course requests for next school year. Yes? Okay, um, there's a difference in weight for GPA. Uh, AP, advanced placement, you get uh, potential for college credit. There's a, there's a certain uh, AP exam at the, end of the, at the end of the course, whereas an honors class is, is, a, is a, a, a mid, a mid uh, I'm sorry, a final exam like any other course. AP courses are mandated by the college board. We have no control, so to speak, as to what the content of that particular course is. It comes prescribed to us because colleges across the nation are accepting those classes in lieu of the tuition that you'll pay when they go to college to take that class. So what is offered within that class and the pacing and the level at which that course is offered is not controlled by any of us here at Lawrence High. It's controlled by the college board. So that provides equity for all students, whether you're in New Jersey or whether you were in Arkansas, that if you took AP Biology, this is the course and this is the rigor to which it was provided for that student so that they can move forward in their college studies as well. An honors level class typically is a class that will move faster than a college prep. It will contain more information, and at times it'll, in, it'll have more in-depth type of things, more complex is typically the difference within the college prep and the honors level courses. And for those courses, we at Lawrence have more autonomy as to what's in those classes, but we do follow the state prescribed or the national standards for that course for its content requirement. It's typically a lot more homework um, and more intense work at the honors level than compared to the college prep, but they both offer rigor and challenges to the students enrolled in those courses. Yeah, you have more individual responsibility. Many honors classes have summer assignments or independent reading assignments that are expected to be done as we move forward in class with whatever we're doing as well. Yes, sir. When you say college prep, you mean the, the regular course or the AP course? 
No, there's regular and college prep are synonyms. Okay, and then we have honors, and then there's the AP, which is advanced placement college level classes. So on, on January, thank you. So on January 27th, your focus should really be on the world language that you want, that your child wants to take at the high school, the electives, and alternates for those electives. When those recommendations come in for the academic courses, the four academic courses, the counselors will be working with your child to get them in. Yes? Can they take two languages? They can. They could take one as an, uh, you know. Sure. Yeah. That's not uncommon. On the yes. On the uh, first come, first uh, available basis? Um, no. Uh, all the courses go in to the computer at the same time. So the, the requests are collected. And then after they're collected, they all go into the computer at the, at the same time, and that's how the, the master schedule is arranged. Yes? Uh, can the registration be done um, to the student access? Because my parent access doesn't work. Yes. And if you have yes. your parent access, call us at the middle school. We can set you up if you're having difficulty, but it can go into the book. Oh, yeah. You should have your own access. Yeah. So call me and I can set you up. <coughs> We're also going to add, I'll just jump in, I'm sorry. We will ask your children to also go on and start to look at it to select. And we've asked them to have you double check and have those conversations. They're going to get their course booklets um, in the next day or so, either Friday or Tuesday, we'll get back. Yes. So I put it online. Students are being recommended for certain core classes, so do we not choose those? Are those pre-chosen for us, or do we choose them we, we encourage you to choose based on what you and your child feel uh, is best, um, based on their current placement in eighth grade. However, the recommendation will come in, and once it comes in, it'll be filled in and your child will be notified. And then uh, a course request list will be mailed to the parents after, after that whole process is completed. So you'll get a list. It's not a schedule. Uh, the schedule's not available till September. But you'll get a list of those classes. OK, those recommendations are live up until May 9th. That's when we're telling our teachers that's the last day that a recommendation can change. Um, so if the student isn't where he or she needs to be to get where they want to go next year by recommendation time, the student still pretty much has the third marking period to show the teacher that they're able to, to handle it at that next level and get that recommendation. And then like I said, first day of school next year, that's when we're handing out the schedules. That's when they'll know their order of classes. So I guess to sum up, they'll know what they're taking this spring, but they won't know the order, they won't know the schedule until the first day of school next year. Okay, like I said, make sure you choose alternative classes, alternative electives, and we ask you to remind your child uh, to go to their appointment, to remember their appointment. Okay, I think Mr. Dauber may want to say a couple words to you. What I'd like to say in closing is we hope you, um, we, we think your child's excited about coming over to the high school. We think it's a great place. Uh, it's got a great academic program. It's a comprehensive high school, so there's a lot of great electives that, the, that your child could take to enjoy their experience along with athletics. And um, we're, we're adding more advanced placement courses. We're up, to, we're up to 19. Now we've added two 
for next year. You probably have, have read all the newspapers seeing that we, we just won a, an AP Honor Roll Award because of our success in AP classes. So it's a really uh, great place that's doing some great things. John. All right, thank you, Tony. Um, a lot of familiar faces to me out in the crowd tonight. Hopefully I still look familiar to many of you. I haven't gotten too old in the last few years, but by show of hands, how many of you were at the intermediate school with me? All right, kind of the overwhelming majority. How many of you is this your first go around at high school? Your oldest is going to high school, show of hands. Okay. All right, I can tell you, you can exhale. All right, it's gonna be okay. All right, high school, high school, we all went to high school. You know, and a lot of things are very different. A lot of things are very similar to whether you were there 10 years ago, 20 years ago, or, or what have you. All right, but there's always a transition, but sometimes the transition is even greater for the parents because you're not here. All right, what you need to do is similar to what we did when we were at the intermediate school is I need you to trust me and my staff with your kids coming to this building. We do our best, despite the fact that it's a 1,200 kid high school, to take each and every student as if they were our own sons or daughters and look after them. We're going to push your kids. It will not be easy. They will struggle. That's okay. If they don't struggle, how much are they really growing? All right, so when that happens, particularly as ninth graders, don't worry about it. If you've got an older child who was through here, raise your hand. All right, if it makes sense what I'm saying to you, and you've seen this when your kids were in ninth grade, just shake your head a little bit, right? All right, there you go, okay. But that's part of it. You want your kids to grow, we want them to grow as well, so that when they leave here after 12th grade, they are gonna be prepared to go to some great place after high school. The best compliment that you or any other parent could give to me as the principal here will not be until your son or daughter is a freshman in college. And you say, I'm so happy Lawrence High School prepared my son, my daughter to do well in college because you won't realize it until they get there because this is the goldfish bowl. You know, we don't know what it's like. You have kids who go to high school here. You don't know what it's like to go to school in Oklahoma, Missouri, St. Louis, whatever the case may be. But I can tell you why this is the place to be. Truth be told, when I was with you at the intermediate school, uh, you probably knew me. I had one son back then, right? I have two now. And both of my boys are adopted and they're from Korea. They don't look like me, they're not Caucasian. What my wife and I wanted to do was we knew they were gonna grow up and we wanted them to go to a school and be in a school district that's gonna support them and gonna prepare them. I live in town now. Some of my neighbors are here. Don't tell them, <laughs> right? Um, so I, we decided a while ago we were gonna move and we needed to make a move and we chose to move to Lawrence. And my wife and I, we kicked around a number of things and I said, well, we can move anywhere, you know, we can go anywhere we want. We can go, want to go to Hopewell? We can go to Hopewell. I can go to Hopewell and everybody there looks like me and I'll fit right in and everything will be great. You know, my boys are Asian. We could go to West Windsor. They would probably be very comfortable there because there are a lot of kids who are like them. But we wanted to put them in a position where they were gonna be exposed to everybody and everything. And if you look around here, all of us, all of, all of you are very different. And that is a major, major skill that our kids get here that they may not get as much of in other places. And quite frankly, I did a study with a bunch of parents a few years ago who came back to here from private school and the biggest reason that they said was, I wanted to get my kid exposure to the real world, with quotes in it. And that means growing up, learning how to live with, learning how to work with kids who are very different than they are. So when they leave high school and they leave college, they are prepared to problem solve and to work with kids, young adults, who are different. And that's one of our major strengths, that element of diversity. And I believe it, and I put my money where my mouth is because my kids are gonna go to this high school. I don't know if I'll be the principal then, 
because they don't listen to me at home now, and they're only four and two, so chances are when they're 14 and 16, they won't listen to anything I say. So that's gonna get very weird. But um, yeah, there's a very good chance of that, right? So yeah, no, 1,200 kids now, they listen to what I say, but I got a four-year-old and a two-year-old at home, they don't listen to anything I say, so I don't understand what that's gonna be. But, um, but I need you to understand that your kids are gonna be okay. You are gonna be okay. If you have questions or concerns at any point, whether it be next year, two, three, four years down the road, what would you have done at the intermediate school? As big as that school is, it's a mom and pop organization. It was kind of like it was me. You know, me at the time might have been, who was it with Dave Adam? I don't know if Dave was there at the time, but either way, you know, pick up the phone and you'd call me. You'd come to school and you'd talk to me. It's the same idea here. I have more people working with me. All these folks over here, they help me with all of that, but it's the same idea. We want your kids to be successful. We're gonna treat them like they're our kids. That doesn't mean telling them what they wanna hear all the time, but the idea is we're gonna push them, but we're gonna care about them, and we're gonna make sure that they get to a place where they can be successful after they leave here. So that's very important. And if you have any questions about any of this, reach out to me, you can reach out to Mindy, either way, but that's part of why we're here. This is a great school, it really is. And it lends itself to what Tony had just said about the AP Honor Roll, all right? The AP Honor Roll Award was not just the fact that we have good, strong AP scores, but we're doing it with every type of kid. Not just the Asian kids, not just the Caucasian kids, we're doing it with African American students, we're doing it with Hispanic students, we're doing it with Eastern European students, we're pushing all those kids into AP courses so that they can all be successful at the college level. And that's why it's a great award, because it really speaks to the diversity that exists here in Lawrence. So, so with that, well, before I ask if anybody has any questions right now for the group that everybody could benefit from, I also want to take a moment just to acknowledge Longtime parent, new board member, Pepper Evans is with us tonight. So if you guys would join me, give Pepper a round of applause. And I didn't realize though, I always thought that Pepper was your real name. I don't know why. I just found out when Pepper was uh, sworn in at the board meeting that it's actually Patricia. All right, uh, I'll still call you Pepper though. You know, I'll call you board member Evans now, how about that? Um, but Pepper, do you have anything, anything that you want to say? You've got two daughters who have kind of come through, so I don't know. Yeah, you're in for one hell of a good time here. I have two kids here, I have a freshman and a junior. My junior is the happiest child in Lawrence Township Public Schools. Anyone who knows her will know I'm not exaggerating when I say that. My freshman came in here smooth. There were, there were no glitches. It's going to be harder on the parents than it will be on the kids. There are not enough hours in the day for kids to do everything they want to do when they get into this building. There's just not enough. They'll, you'll look at that course catalog. You'll want to come back to school. That's been my experience. You're in good hands. All right. Thank you, Pepper. Um, so I don't know if we'll do a couple Q&A, but before we do that, I just want to let you guys know, this is something that we started new this year, and the kids have kind of taken ownership, and that's something they have to pull the kids back because they yell at people about this. But there's the crest that's outside. In, the, in a number of years, like, we wanted to keep kids off of the crest, so it was kind of blocked off with like the, the um, I don't even know what you'd call them, but you see, you know, at the movie theaters, you know, the straps, the whatever you call them, ropes. So we talked with the kids, and they said, let's take them down. I said, well, what happens? We want to kind of protect the crest. We want to keep it as sacred. The kids are going to walk all over it. We said, no, no, no. I said, no, we won't do it. I said, you sure you're not going to do it? You guys are going to take ownership of that because it's something that's important to our kids culturally in the building. And if you come in here any morning or any afternoon when you get 1,200 kids piling out this main hallway, they walk around the crest like, you know, when you see ants moving around things out on the, you know, out on the, you know, wherever you may be. Uh, they do it, they own it, because they believe in it, because it's important to them, just like this school is important to them, just like the school is important to me and everybody here, and it should be to all of you as well. So what I would say, though, is when you do come in and out of the building, parents aren't aware, and I don't want any of the kids to jump on you about it, is stay off the crest, okay? All right, so that's just something that's kind of a cool piece that we're doing this year, and the kids have really taken to it. So if you can support us with that, 
uh, that would be a great help. So does anybody have any questions or anything at all that we can help you with right now that you think might benefit the group? Nothing. Kirk, no questions? <laughs> yeah? All right. Oh, yeah, here we go. I'm sorry. Do you guys have a PSAT program where they, you have kids uh, actually selected to take the PSAT or they could take it voluntarily? All right. Good question. The question is uh, centering on PSATs. Uh, do we have a PSAT program and what's our, our setup more or less as far as how kids do their thing with that? So I don't want to misspeak because it really comes largely through through Tony with, uh, with that. But um, I mean we do and all of our juniors currently take it. It doesn't cost anyone anything. We offer that. Uh, kids who are not juniors or sophomore, you could take it, uh, but then you, you have to pay the cost for it. But when kids are entering 11th grade in the fall, uh, we do offer that for our students to start set them up for that, uh, that whole SAT program, or the, you know, the adventure that is SAT. I don't know if I missed anything. No, you pretty much got it. Uh, any, all juniors take it here during the school day, the, Wednesday, the third Wednesday in October for free. Lawrence pays for it. Sophomores can take it. Um, they have to pay a, a small amount. Um, my experience, I've had a freshman or two take it before, if they really want to. The P in PSAT stands for practice. So if they take it a couple times, it's for the better. In the back. It does. I think I'm going to defer to the old uh, PE teacher in the back. <laughs> You're younger than me. And that's after school. Thank you for coming. Look for those course booklets tomorrow after school. And please sit your child down and have a good talk about everything that this place has to offer. Thank you.